Scotty Barnes is establishing himself amidst the upper echelon of NBA talent north of the border for Toronto. He's tied for the second most 20-point games this season only behind Curry and Jokic, breaking Chris Bosh's record for the longest 20-plus point game streak at age 22 or younger. Barnes fueled the Raptors to an insane 22-point comeback in a game where they trailed 15 entering the final quarter. 17 of Scott's 30 came in that fourth to force OT against Wemby, which included draining a clutch triple with under a minute left to tie it up, along with the fact that he made 5 of 10 threes, had 11 rebounds, both 3 steals and blocks, plus was a game high plus 14. It was the playmaking reads from Barnes that opened up space for him, thriving in Serbian head coach Darko Ryakovic's quick decision-based system. Out of this altered Spanulis action to instead have the one intruder setting the cross, Scott gets the handoff from Yak, then makes a great read inside to his big. Stay tuned for how Barnes is beasting on the NBA, but just 11.5% of you watching are subscribed, so if you haven't yet, press subscribe, turn on notifications, and hit thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Showing off his evolution as an ISO creator, a polished left-handed in and out sees Barnes sauce up Johnson in an ISO to collapse the Wembenyama pressure, sweeping through to catch the rookie leaning and find Ananobi, who drives baseline to find him relocated on the left wing for the fundamentally sound spot up. As we'll look at, the jump shooting mechanics from Barnes are more on point than ever in his third season. Same lefty in and out sees him fly out of that size up to his left, then bait Collins by going up while dumping it off to Yak for the up fake and finish. Directly after crossing half, his improved awareness notices Sohan sagging the slightest bit on Trent Jr., so he bullets it to Gary for the spot up. Receiving the dick cross court through the reach of Wemby, watch how together the stability of his jump shot is. Given he's a 6'10 slashing phenom who I've said in the past should be taking it downhill as much as possible, defenses don't hesitate to leave him open, permitting this 1-2 step into it L-shaped parallel deep range bomb as the trailer off the Malachi pitch. Queen Hezzy prompts the drive and kick to OG, whose miss gets ripped away in traffic by a galloping Scott, who proceeds to back down Sohan and posterize him. Scotty backing in. Bucket. Another trailer pitch where the Spurs leave him open, sees Scott stop on a dime behind the back, send Wemby sliding, then he gets it back on the Schroeder kick and flies right past the number one pick to the rim. Dennis auto screen and roll flows into a swing to Barnes, where a hezzy tween hezzy moving jab combo leads into a step back, and the off the dribble contested shooting ability is scary if it can stay consistent. His current 42.1% three point stroke is the result of not merely the small seven game sample size, but refined shooting structure. Barnes is letting it fly with zero hesitation whatsoever, and whether he's left open or not, the high release point that his jumpers maintain despite its adjustment to become more seamless and under control gives him the confidence to pull the trigger. Scotty's defense is also a lot better this season. He's averaging over two blocks per game and has had two plus steals three times over the year's mere first seven outings. From having the range and anticipation to block three-point shooters, to making high-flying yet composed closeouts, his defensive IQ and ground coverage on the perimeter has taken a leap. The well-roundedness to be both elite at guarding the outside while also being the team's most active rim protector on the inside will put Barnes in the Defensive Player of the Year conversation if Toronto has a successful year. Barnes is a beast at tracking down slashers, whether it's playing the safety as the off-ball low man or bodying his matchup on the ball and still finding the angle to extend legally to SWAT isolation attacks. Scott is more in control than ever defensively, as on the backside, he first neutralizes White to force the kick out, then while recovering, evasively shortens his steps to get Vooch thinking he's open, before rising up with his 7-3 wingspan to bother the attempt. There have been a lot of comparisons between Barnes and Cleveland's Evan Mobley, given they were the 3rd and 4th picks respectively in 2021's draft, but based off the two-way variety of Scotty's bag, not to mention the clear development his statistical output so far entails, Scott is, as of right now, the far and away better player between the two. Following a sophomore slump under Nick Nurse where his numbers and by the eye test production stalled, Barnes is clearly benefiting off the Raptors coaching change. After granting Barnes with the new player of the game chain, the Serbian would speak on Scotty's value, saying quote unquote, I'm blessed to have a player like him. With great coaching comes great development, 
and regardless of Toronto being 3-4 and four right now, the early progression of a man expected to be the face of the franchise for many years to come in Scotty signals that Ryakovich's tenure is off to a good start. More engaged than ever before defensively, Barnes forces the McDermott kick out before stopping short of Champagny to lure him into the jumper before pulling off the rare, easy block on a jumper. Speaking of rarities, in this San Antonio game, Scott became the first player in the 21st century to simultaneously post at least 30 points, 11 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals, 3 blocks, and 5 threes. The positioning's on point, as he's in the perfect spot to knock loose the Trey Jones floater entry. Here he goes from shutting down one pick and roll and drop, to providing a second line of defense on Wemby, which forces the kick out, and then lunges out in two galloping strides to block the McDermott triple. After a Sohan fake DHO, a jumping jack up to Jeremy after the picking up of his dribble, knocks loose the entry, which Barnes gathers himself. Fake stunt recovery gets Johnson thinking the lane's clear when really Scott's in position for the spring up and swat. This fly-in Superman steal, where he even has the heads-up awareness to call timeout and get the Raps another possession, saved Toronto the game. Raptor fans haven't seen that type of two-way takeover the fourth quarter definitive domination in the clutch since Kawhi Leonard. We're witnessing the takeoff of another pure hooper with every bit of talent in Scotty. Out of anything for Barnes, what's most exciting to me is the involvement of his skill to knock down tough shots on the move, plus his IQ to be aggressive when need be, manufacture looks, and sense when he has enough room to let it fly. If you've seen my Raptor videos in the past, I've always been of the mindset that Barnes is the second coming of Giannis and should focus on his slashing as much as possible. With every jumper, that assessment looks more and more off base. Scotty's on his way to displaying that he's much more than just a slasher offensively. His jump shooting reps and refinement are speaking for themselves. Most noticeable is the fact that Barnes is all around maturing as a professional and has a killer mentality towards opponents that's giving fans in Toronto new life. But I want to know in your opinion, what impresses you about Scotty's game the most? Let me know for a chance at next video shout out and to compete in Community Speaks. Today's shout out goes to Lorena Santiago, who says the X factor for Golden State is 100% the second unit. If it's not JK, it's Dario or GP2 or Moody. It's crazy how well this team is clicking. Some of the most beautiful basketball I've seen. Warriors starting unit is averaging less minutes than any other starting unit. They'll be fresh come the playoffs. Dubs did take an L to Cleveland on Sunday, but great take. Appreciate every answer. DFlow signing off.